Hi, this is Guy. Have you ever been concerned about just how safe is it to use pesticides? Have you ever asked yourself if using pesticides would cause harm to you, your family, or maybe your pets? Well, today we're going to talk about that. And I am going to tell you the absolute truth about it. You can trust me too, because I have been doing pest control for many years now. And I have been licensed in several states. Well, I'm not licensed anymore because I'm retired now. But given that many people need to save money these days, I decided that I would share ways that I learned over the years on how you can do your own pest control effectively, safely, and most importantly, inexpensively. I will answer any question for anybody, anytime, about any pest for free even if I do not have a video on the particular pest in question. My goal is to save people money. So if you find this video helpful, please share it with someone you know who may also need to, to save a buck on pest control. Also, if you would like to see more of my videos, then please click on that subscribe button and don't forget to click on that little bell next to it so that you get notified when I have another video published. Now, if you really like what I do, please show me a little love and click on that like button. Okay, today we're going to talk about just how safe it is to use pesticides. That is to say, just how toxic is this stuff? One of the questions that I get asked all the time is if pesticides that I recommend are safe for people and pets. Well, the short answer is that they are perfectly safe when used according to label directions. And if you would like to know more about why that is, then stay tuned. Now, when preparing for this video, I had to decide just how technical I was going to get and who my audience was going to be. What I decided was to try to keep things just as simple as possible. So, clearly, this video is not intended for entomologists, environmental engineers, industrial hygienists, and, and all that sort of thing. No, no. This video is intended for homeowners or do-it-yourselfers who just want to know how safe it is to spray pesticides around their house or apartment. So, in the interest of not totally boring people to death with, you know, things like how you calculate the LD50 of a, of a particular pesticide and, you know, that sort of thing. I am going to pretty much try and just stick to the basics of what the average person should know about the safety of pesticides. Now, if you are familiar with my videos, then you know that they are typically not short. <laughs> but I am thorough. And even though I am going to stick, stick to just the basics, I want to make sure that you have all the information that you need to make the right decisions for you. Okay. So, just how safe is it to use pesticides in and around your house or apartment? Well, Let's get right into that. Let me begin by talking just a little bit 
about my history as it applies to pesticides. Please, don't tune out just yet and fast forward this thing. This is actually important because I am about to clear up some myths about modern pesticides. You see, I first started doing pest control professionally back in 1981. Back in those days, we were using some really toxic pesticides and we were applying them in, in spaces where they really should not have been applied. In our defense though, we were led to believe by the companies that made these pesticides that they were safe and effective when used according to label directions. But that was not really true. Some of these products, like Durspan for example, were actually toxic to people, especially children, even after they dried. Now, products like that worked really great. But the problem was that it was proven that these materials were really getting people sick especially children. So they were essentially banned from production in the United States because they did not meet the new requirements that were mandated by the 1996 Food Quality Protection Act, which requires the EPA to restrict a pesticide if it poses a threat to, to children. Well, as I understand it, even though these products could no longer be manufactured, the existing stockpiles were still allowed to be sold and used, and so these products were still in use up to the year 2000, and perhaps a little beyond that by some applicators. Understandably, there were any number of complaints and horror stories that were associated with the short and long-term effects of the use of these products, especially with regard to children. So why is this important? Well, since we are only talking about pesticides fading out of ex existence around maybe 20 years ago, the memories of people regarding these pesticides are still fresh and, quite frankly, very scary. But here's the thing. Modern day pesticides are not like that anymore. Okay. So does that mean today's pesticides are perfectly safe to use? Well. That depends on the particular pesticide in question. Not all pesticides are equally toxic. There are some pesticides that are labeled for outside use only, and other pesticides that are perfectly acceptable to use inside your home. Obviously, pesticides that are labeled for exterior use only may be somewhat more toxic than pesticides that you are allowed to use inside your home or apartment. So let's have a look at how to tell just how toxic a particular pesticide really is and how safe it is to use around your family and pets. When we talk about the safety of pesticides, we typically talk about the hazard or the level of risk or danger of using a particular pesticide, and we look at its potential for harm when it is used under a given set of circumstances. Okay, so what does that mean anyway? Well, 
I promised I would try to keep this simple. So basically what I'm talking about is how toxic or dangerous a pesticide is going to be to an individual based on the level of toxicity of the product and the amount of exposure that there is to it over a given period of time. Um, hmm. That sounds a bit complicated to me. <sighs> okay. There's actually a formula for this. It's hazard equals toxicity times exposure. To me, that is just a complex way of saying that the degree of toxicity of a particular pesticide cannot just be measured by its immediate effect. Look, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. See if we can not simplify this thing a bit. There is a big difference between a do-it-yourselfer who treats their home every three months getting a little bit of diluted pesticide on their skin that has been properly mixed with water and you know then they wash it off immediately or they take a shower or something as opposed to a professional pest controller who fails to wear the personal protective equipment that is required and then they get exposed to the product all day long every single day do you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like drinking alcohol. If you just have a couple of sips of beer and then jump behind the wheel of a car and then you drive, most likely if you get pulled over by the police, you are not going to blow a breathalyzer over the legal limit in any state in the United States. However, if you drink down several beers within an hour and then go out and drive and you get pulled over by the police, you may well blow a breathalyzer that is over the legal limit. Also, there is a big difference between chugging down five beers in the span of 30 minutes and drinking five beers in the span of five days and taking two hours to drink each beer. That is because the hazard is equal to the toxicity times the exposure. That is to say, the length of time it took to expose someone to any given amount of the substance that is in question. In these examples, the beer was just as intoxicating, but the level or length of exposure was not the same. It's pretty much that way with pesticides too. To continue my drinking analogy, suppose you compare drinking a shot of whiskey before you drive, as opposed to drinking down several shots of whiskey before you drive. In both cases, you still may have an illegal level of alcohol in your blood. That is because the concentration of alcohol in the whiskey is much higher than it would be in beer. So the whiskey is more intoxicating than the beer. The toxicity of beer is way less than the toxicity of whiskey. And it's kind of that way with pesticides as well. And therefore, just like alcohol, pesticides are labeled based on their toxicity. In the case of alcohol, the container will tell you the percentage of alcohol that is in the product. But with pesticides, the container will tell you the relative acute toxicity of the product, and they will do this with 
signal words. So, there are two factors at work here. How immediately toxic is the material and how toxic is it over time? I know, I know, it's starting to sound confusing again. Don't worry though. I am, go I am going to simplify this a whole lot in just a minute. Governing agencies like the EPA understand that most people are not going to spend the time trying to figure out the scientific terminology and such as that in order to determine how safe a product is to use. So the solution to that is to use basic signal words on the labels of pesticides. By using signal words, we can easily determine just how toxic any given pesticide is going to be to use. So let's go over them and I'm going to explain each single signal word and what it means. Now to make this just a bit more exciting, let's start with the most, the most dangerous one first. And of course, since it's the most dangerous one, it is going to be called danger or poison. You may have seen some of the products that have the labels danger and poison on them with that ominous looking red skull and crossbones. Obviously, these would be the most toxic ones and they are placed in what is called Toxicity Category 1. Now, you should also know that they have this in Spanish on the labels, but since I do not speak Spanish, I am not even going to attempt to pronounce it. You should know that it's there, though. Products that are labeled danger and poison are so toxic that just a few drops of this material could be fatal to a person who weighs 150 pounds or less if it is ingested. Also, this material would have the potential to cause serious damage to your eyes and it may result in severe skin irritation as well. In other words, you don't want to be eating or drinking it and you don't want to be getting it in on your skin or in your eyes. Obviously, pest control products with this type of labeling should be avoided by do-it-yourselfers. This material is strictly for the pros. Now, some pest control products just have the word danger on them and Frankly, it is not entirely clear to me what this means exactly. But you gotta know it can't be good. And at a minimum, it will probably cause severe eye injuries and skin irritation. And of course, can't be good to eat either, right? Don't worry though. You would be hard pressed to find many pesticides with a danger signal word. In fact, the only one I can think of right off the top of my head, there are probably others, but the one that I can think of would be sulfuryl fluoride, which is the gas they typically use to fumigate buildings for, th for things like termites. And let me tell you, that is some nasty stuff and it will kill you. For homeowners and do-it-yourselfers, though, I really don't think you need to worry about running into signal words like danger or poison. The next category that I want to talk about is toxicity category 2. These products bear a signal word that says warning. And again, 
This is in Spanish, but since I don't speak Spanish, I am not going to attempt to pronounce it. Obviously, a warning label is nowhere near as toxic as a danger poison label. For one thing, you're not going to see the, that ominous skull and crossbones on the container. Instead of a 150 pound person dying from just a few drops of this material, it would probably take more like a teaspoon or more to result in death. Also, the effects of getting it on your skin or in your eyes may be somewhat delayed. But that is to say that you may not even get that skin irritation until after about 72 hours after you get exposed. Still, this is not the sort of material that you're going to want to eat or drink or get on your skin and certainly not in your eyes. Now, keep in mind that we are talking about the undiluted product. Pest control products are seldom applied without being mixed with water. Most of the time, you're going to see dilution rates of something like one ounce of the concentrate to a gallon of water. Clearly, after a product is diluted one ounce to a gallon of water, it is going to be nowhere near as toxic as when it's in the straight concentrated form. Look, think of it this way. Did you ever visit with someone who made coffee that was like super strong? You know, it was kind of like drinking mud. Well, what do you think would happen if you took just one ounce of that coffee and you mixed it with a gallon of water? Would it still taste like mud? In all likelihood, it would probably just taste like water. Do you see my point? While you certainly would not want to be exposed to the concentrated pesticide, the diluted pesticide is going to present much less of a hazard. Of course, not all pesticides are going to be mixed one ounce per gallon. But you get the point, right? So, pesticides do not sound quite as dangerous anymore now, do they? Well, guess what? It gets even safer than that. There is also toxicity categories 3 and 4. Toxicity level 4 is almost not even worth talking about because it is hardly hazardous at all. So let's talk about toxicity category 3. These products bear the signal word of caution. So please listen very carefully here. Virtually all the pesticides that I recommend in my videos, virtually all of them, have the signal word of caution. None of them have the signal word danger, poison, or warning. They are all caution. That means a person weighing 150 pounds or less would need to ingest an ounce or more of the concentrated material in order to result in death. Also, these products are only slightly irritating to the skin. As always, you certainly would not want to be intentionally eating these materials, but getting a little bit of it on your skin is probably not going to cause much of a problem. 
Therefore, if you wear long pants, long sleeve shirt, a hat, eye protection, rubber gloves, a respirator, and so forth, then these products are absolutely 100% safe to apply. Keep in mind though, like before, in most cases, you are generally mixing these products with a significant amount of water. The diluted product is going to be nowhere near as toxic as the concentrated product. Now that doesn't mean that you want to go take a bath in this stuff or start drinking it down if you get too hot or something. But the reality is the diluted material is going to present little or no hazard to you if you just follow the label directions and you wear the proper protective equipment. The best part is that all the liquid pesticides that I recommend are considered totally non-toxic after they dry. Just keep in mind though that when a product label tells you that you should not use it inside, then it's a good idea to believe them. Okay, so what does all this mean? What's the bottom line here anyway? Well, let's talk about that. The bottom line here is that the products that I recommend in my videos are 100% safe to use as long as you follow label directions. With regard to the liquid pesticides that I recommend, they are totally non-toxic after they dry and they represent literally zero potential for any harm to you your family, or your pets. Okay, so you're probably saying, that's great with regard to liquid pesticides, but what about those gel baits that you recommend? You know, the ones I use for things like ants and cockroaches. Well, those also have a signal word of caution on them, which means you would need to eat a whole lot of it in order to get sick or die. If you watch my videos, then you know that all you are going to use for roaches or ants are just a, you know, tiny little dots that are spread fairly far apart. This stuff sticks really well to surfaces and so it would be very hard to get it off in the first place. And even if a child or a pet did that, they would not be able to ingest anywhere near enough of the product in order to cause them harm. So what about the granules that I recommend to bait ants with? Well, just like the gel bait, this also has a signal word of caution. And just like with the gel baits, your kids or pets would need to eat a whole lot of it in order to get sick or die. All you are ever going to do with these granules is just put a small amount of them down on the floor or a little bit, you know, like maybe in a bottle cap or something like that. The small quantity of the granules that you are going to be using would be nowhere near enough to cause harm to your children or pets. So the baits are absolutely 100% safe for children and pets, as long as they don't get into the original containers. Obviously, all pesticides should be stored out of the reach of children. Now, think about that for a minute. How is that 
any different than plain old laundry detergent. The dusts I recommend are the same way. The quantities of the dust that are being applied in no way would represent any type of a hazard to children or pets. Again, they have the same signal word of caution and you are going to use nowhere near enough dust to be a problem for children or pets. Aerosols are pretty much the same way. You would be wise to wear a respirator with aerosols. I mean, even for over-the-counter stuff that you can get right at the supermarket like Raid, that has a signal word of caution too. But other than that, trust me when I tell you the aerosols are perfectly safe. Okay. So what if you're, you're busy spraying these pesticides, you know, like outside maybe around the house, and, and it's a hot day, and you don't have long sleeve shirts on, you know, long sleeve shirt on, like you're supposed to, then you're spraying some of this pesticide on the fascia boards overhead or the eaves or something like that, and some of the overspray gets onto your skin, you know, maybe on your arms or the back of your neck or something like that. Trust me when I tell you that you are not going to die and you are probably not going to get ill either. It is possible that you may have an allergy to some of these materials. But then again, folks, people can be allergic to anything, you know, including peanuts, pollen, or whatever. I mean, you can't do anything about allergies, right? But allergies aside, all you need to do is just take a shower when you are finished applying the pesticide, and I can assure you that you are going to be perfectly fine. Let me stress again that I am not talking about uh, professional pest controllers here. This advice that I'm giving you today is solely for do-it-yourselfers that are applying pesticides on an occasional basis. Do you remember at the beginning of this video I talked about that formula? Hazard equals toxicity times exposure. So, while it is really perfectly okay to be occasionally exposed to a small amount of the diluted pesticide with the signal word of caution, it may not be okay if you are a professional pest controller that is getting exposed to this same exact material day in and day out. If you do this for a living, then you should naturally be way more careful than someone who, who just does this on occasion for their own home or something like that. Do you see what I'm saying here? If you are a do-it-yourselfer, then do not fret uh, about any of this. If you get a little of this on your skin, you know, the diluted product, you're going to be perfectly okay. And trust me, if you wear the personal protective equipment, and if you take a shower when you're finished for the day, I promise you, you are going to be good to go and you have nothing to worry about in terms of getting ill. And again, do not fret about your kids and your pets either. After this stuff has been applied and has dried, it is literally 
not toxic at all to children or pets. All you need to do is keep the kids and the pets inside if you are treating the outside until the pesticide dries. If you are applying a pesticide inside, then it's a good idea to have people and pets outside while you were treating until it dries. That is the reason why I try not to use pesticides inside whenever possible. It's not because these materials are you know, terribly toxic or anything like that. It's because most people don't want to leave the house for an hour or so while the pesticide dries. The bottom line here is that it just could not be any safer unless you were applying plain old water. And folks, that is the truth. Okay, that's it for me today. If you found this video to be of assistance to you in any way, please share it with a friend or family member. And if you would like to see more of my videos, then please click on that subscribe button and don't forget to click on that little bell next to it so that you get notified when I have another video posted. Now, if you really liked what, you know, what I did in this video, then please show me a little love by clicking on that like button as well. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and please do not hesitate to ask questions. Remember, I will answer any questions about any pest at any time for anybody for free, even if I do not have a video on the particular pest in question. I am always here to help.